Councilwoman LaShawn Burr Danley, and I'm here with my colleague. And I'm Councilman Samuel Davis. Yes, and we both are, we serve in Ward 3. I'm in Post 1, and Councilman Davis is in Post... Post 2. Yes, and we are so excited and so delighted that we are here again, 2016, to discuss and to celebrate black history right here in the city of Douglasville. Can you believe, LaShawn, how time has just passed? Actually, I can't. Um, time goes by really fast, but isn't it nice right now, Councilman Davis, that we are in our Douglasville Conference Center and we utilize this very, very nice building. So it's really nice that we're here and we can talk about celebrating black history again for 2016. And I want to say again, this conference center is one of the state of the arts conference center. And uh, I really appreciate our staff and uh, for doing a very fine job. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what, where are we going to start? We've been doing well, this now for how long? LaShawn, we are probably going into our eighth season. Wow. And, uh, you know, you and I talked, and, and we want to just catch up from the past and bring it up to date. Right. So, actually, the Black History Program started in 2008, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And you and I began to start working on this program 2011. Mm -hmm. what, what did we do in 2011? Can you rec Oh, you know what? We talked about your dad. Jesse Davis Park. Jesse Davis Park. That's right. I How did that get started? Well, that started many, many years ago when I was a child. He had a baseball team. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't have anywhere to go and, and play baseball. So right. Dr. Young owned that property. So Dr. Young, do, I don't think Young I... Young Refinery. Oh, okay. Right up, right up the street off of Strickland Street. That's oh, right. Okay, okay. So Dr. Young gave my father permission and... Uh, from there, it, it just took off. Wow. So who who were some of the heady, heavy hitters with your father? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think I was born during that time. Well, LaShawn, you was there. <laughs> was I there? You wasn't just old enough yet. <laughs> okay, Some of right. the uh, team players, uh, uh, Councilman Harvey Jones okay. was the coach. All right. And some of the players was uh, City Councilman Alton Caldwell. He was a, actually a player? A player. Wow. Okay. Player. And then some of the other young men around the, uh, around the whole community. Mm -hmm. And before they ever start a baseball game on Sunday, they all had to go to church. Wow. And then after church, they all would meet up at the home house on Davis Drive. Mm -hmm. And that's the home of your parents? Yes. Okay. And then after that, they all would go and go to the ball field. And play ball. And that was one of my father's favorite thing. You must go to church first before you come out and play baseball oh, on his team. That's awesome. Most that's awesome. of the guys around there on all the teams played baseball and they went to church. Mm -hmm. Church was a big important thing and still is today. And still is today. Yes. Also, some other heavy hitters, <coughs> was it Mr. Oh gosh, what's his name? He lives on Carton Street. Mr. Dobbs? Willie Dobbs. Willie Dobbs. We interviewed him once. That's right. And we did interview yes. him. It wasn't in 2011. It was last year. Was it last, last year? Last year, 2014. We interviewed him, and he spoke about the, uh, about the Jesse the Davis. Him and my father was coaches. Okay. And both of them got it started. Wow. So it took off from there. And then you mentioned, um, our our the late Harvey Jones, Reverend Harvey Jones. Mm -hmm. Now there's Harvey Jones Stadium. Right. That's right there at Jesse Davis Park. And the Alice Hawthorne Center. And the uh, Alice Hawthorne Center. So in 2011, just recapping what we have done in the mm -hmm. past, we were talking about Jesse Davis Park, named after your father. Mm -hmm. And um, also, you interviewed your nephew. I sure did. Justin. Justin, Justin Davis. Justin is the diplomat, and uh, he's right now, he's in Cuba. Really? But he should be home in uh, July. Okay. And he have another assignment. He wow. spent three years on the assignment. So he was just home for the MLK celebration. Okay. And to represent the uh, state of Cuba, I mean, well, Cuba. Wow. And uh, so that was good. And Justin graduated from Douglas County High School? Douglas County High School, went on to Carnell and Georgetown. Wow. And he is not, every time he comes, he never forgets the, his never. support in the city of Douglas County. Never, Hill. ever forgets. That is awesome. That's and, awesome. uh, you know, we interviewed Ricky Dobbs also. Okay. All right. You interviewed Ricky? I don't well, remember. I'm not really sure, but I know that Ricky Dobbs Jr. Mm -hmm. has been very, very involved with the city of Douglasville as well. 
-hmm. And um, we did honor Ricky because that's mm -hmm. when Congressman Scott came down. We were at the Alice Hawthorne Center, but um, we had several elected officials and the community to honor Ricky Dobbs. He's currently still in the Navy, mm -hmm. and he graduated from Douglas County High School Douglas as County well. High School. And then he went on to the Naval Academy. Right. That's right, okay. And I've been reading that he's getting ready to enter himself into the NFL. He's getting, he's getting right. ready. He's All been working right. out. Well, he was a good quarterback. Yes. He was a very good quarterback. So after 2011, let's see, what else did we... What else did we do after that? After 2011, well, you know, we, um, we started on a mission, and then we had arts of music. Right. We've had a theme every year. Every year. I remember that, the art of music. The art of music. And you had your dear friend and my dear friend who comes to Wednesday Wind Down. He plays the trumpet. Right. Milkshake. Milkshake, yes. And he did some bites during that time, too. That's right. And you had one of our the gospel music, one of our friend, your yes. friend, my friend. Mm -hmm. The renowned, J renowned James Big Nun. <laughs> yes, and we actually went over, went to, over to one of the, the funeral home. Right, Willie Watkins. Uh -huh. Yes, right. That was a really good, that was a really, really good time. That was a good, my was heart. A, James, when he sings, he brings out the best. Precious Lord, take my hand. <laughs> Are you going to sing? No. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to sing? Okay. So we had James Bignon, and then we also had Milkshake. Oh, and how can we ever forget? We had... The world-renowned. Our jazz singer. Myrna Clayton. Yes! Myrna Clayton. Myrna will be with us this year once we start talking about upcoming events this year. Okay. I'll let you know about when Myrna be. But please, Myrna Clayton please. is... She's coming back to Douglasville? She's coming back wow. to Douglasville. I had an opportunity to visit with um, Mrs. Clayton at the Mapleton Playhouse. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. It she was. really, really does a good job. It was a cold night, but she it warmed us all though. We all was out there. <laughs> she did, she did. It was a great event. Right. So are you, are you saying that she's actually coming to Douglasville in 2016? Mm -hmm. 2016. Wow. Once we get into the 2016 calendar, uh, our winds wind down and uh, hopefully uh, we could have her perform for Juneteenth. Okay. And uh, because she is in the, in the heritage, she's culture, mm -hmm. and she's in and out of the uh, country all the time. That's awesome. That is mm -hmm. awesome. It's so important that we remember our heritage. Mm -hmm. You know, we remember those that died and those that fought so that, you know, black people would have the right to vote. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's just really nice now that how we have diversity in the city of Douglasville and we're working towards that. We, we now have our first African-American female mayor mm -hmm. and um, we still have a long way to go. That's right. But I am so glad, Councilman Davis, that we continue to share and do this every year. And LaShawn, I really appreciate you in very special ways because if it wasn't for you and your knowledge and Reverend Miller with the mule train, <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right. So, let's see. Now you're moving on up a little bit in 2014. Mm -hmm. We had black history. We talked about the spiritual culture. Mm -hmm. Now, that was a good one. Let's see. Let me back up. We have to remember Judge Barbara Caldwell. But I remember we went to her home, mm -hmm. and she had a chance to talk about how her, um, the late, her husband, um, Alton Caldwell, mm -hmm. who was a council member right. here in the city of Douglasville. And you just said that he played on the baseball team with your father. Mm -hmm. It was some pros. Yes, and she showed us a lot of pictures, and she, her home was very inviting. And that was a really good um, discussion with Judge Barbara Caldwell, mm -hmm. who is our magistrate judge. Right. Yeah, and actually, she is the only black female who is um, who's at the, on the county bench. courthouse. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many years she's been there? And she used to teach me in school. What? <laughs> I did, did she really? Yeah, she was teaching at uh, with uh, Miss Dorothy Sparks. Oh, okay. All right. At Douglas County Douglas High School? Douglas County High School. Oh, That wow. was a little bit before your time, LaShawn. before Lashawn. my time, I know. I got a you lot know, of stuff on here before uh, my time. Uh, uh, Miss, <laughs> Miss Danley Leonard's <laughs> wife taught me. Georgia. Now, I do remember Miss Danley because she taught at Lithia. 
-hmm. Lithia Springs. So Miss Danley was also your teacher? Yeah, Miss Danley. Oh, you mean Georgia Danley? Georgia Danley. Oh, wow, Sam. I won't say how old you are. You well, won't say. you know. <laughs> you still look very good. Well, thank you. Okay, so we moved on up and we did um, our spiritual culture. Oh, and you know what? This is during the time that we had an opportunity to interview our pastors. Right. Now that session was that really was huge. great because we traveled outside of the city of Douglasville and we went to Atlanta. It was on Cascade. That's right. And it was Reverend, was it Reverend Milner? I believe it was. Yeah, he's a very good friend of Dr. Joseph Lowry. Right. That was during the time that Dr. Lowry was ill, mm -hmm. so he could not be with us. But, but Reverend Milner talked to us about the, what was it? Was the, it the um, I'm sorry? Was it the struggle? It was the struggle, <clears throat> and he also spoke about the, um, there's an organization that he's in in Atlanta mm -hmm. where he get all the pastors There's together. The black clergy, you and I yes, visit. Yes, the black you clergy. And I visit yes, and you know what? I want to say they are they are still going pretty strong. He said mm -hmm. they had about thirty <clears throat> members. Yeah, because you and I took time out busy schedule, and we was uh, one of the guests there. You That's remember? right. Yes, and we need to go back and revisit Reverend Milner and and um, see how, how Dr. Lowry is doing. Mm -hmm. And although Reverend Milner is outside of the city of Douglasville, he gave us some really good words of wisdom. Mm -hmm. And there was another pastor there with him as well during that time. I can't remember right now. Right. So, and then we came back to Douglasville and mm -hmm. we interviewed Reverend Parker. Mm, that's right. Randy Parker, <coughs> Bishop mm -hmm. Randy Parker. Bishop Randy Parker. And <coughs> Reverend Wright. <coughs> yes, Reverend and James Wright. Reverend James Wright. Mm -hmm. And then also, and Bishop Parker is the pastor of the Greater Mount Olive. Greater Mount Olive. <coughs> church. Overcoming Church. Overcoming Church. That's right. Right. And then Reverend Wright is the pastor of the Zion Hill Truth Center. Zion Hill Truth Center, which is on Colquitt Street. That's right. And then we interviewed um, Reverend Hale. That's right. Who his church is St. James, James AME, mm -hmm. which is right on Dallas Highway. Right. Right. Wow, and that did was. We, did we interview, we interviewed Pastor Williams or was it his wife? Oh, it was his wife. His wife. Yes, um, Sister Williams. Sister Williams. And this year, well, last year, Sister Williams actually had her first CD. CD release. Yes, and, and, and you actually did the music. I did, <laughs> and I had her to come down the winds and wind down, and it was just, just It was great. great. I was there. Great. I was there. That was really moving what the pastors were talking about. I, I can recall Pastor Hale and Reverend Williams stating that it's really important that we stay involved in the community, and these were not their exact words, and mm -hmm. Bishop Parker, how he stated that it was really important that we continue to communicate with them. And um, I'm not sure if they have started like a black clergy. I'm not sure. But I know that um, the pastors were meeting a lot last year, every month. They had right. a meeting every month. Mm -hmm. And we often communicate with, with the pastors. That's right. Often. And I do see them in the community. I do mm -hmm. see them, whether it be a clothing drive or giving out food or visiting the sick and just letting people know that it is important that they continue. We don't just see them behind the four walls. That's right. Right. Yeah. But we forgot something else. What did we forget? In 2015, remember the park. Keith Park. Keith Park. The name was changed from Keith Park to the, the Willie, Willie Workers. Workers. Now, you know what? Do you remember why Keith Park was named Keith Park? Well, I remember hearing some things that uh, that was a principal here. Mm hmm And um, over at Huston High School. Right. That was before my time, too. You're right. <laughs> that was during my era. And uh, <laughs> and uh, the, the young lady, and uh, they thought so the word of the uh, principal, mm -hmm. and uh, they named the park after them. Right. And they that did. was a group called the Willing Workers. The Willing Workers. And during that time, we interviewed my mother, Miss mm -hmm. Sarah Whitaker, who is still here. And also, we interviewed Miss Faye mm -hmm. Dobbs mm -hmm. Carter. Carter. Because my mother actually was one of the original members of the Willing Workers. Mm -hmm. That's right. And also... 
Faye, her mom, was one of the original, original. workers. And her mother's name was Miss Miss Nail Dobbs. Miss Nail Dobbs. And she's no longer with us. Right. Um, we still have her memories, but she's no longer with us physically. And then we actually had a groundbreaking. Sure did. Right. That was great. So Keith Park, which is located on Thompson Street, mm -hmm. is now named the Willing Working Park. Park. And right. you know what was so precious is we were able to go over. The City TV staff went over with me to Mother Parker's, Mother Lula Parker. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we, Mother Parker passed in 2000. 15, she was, I tell you, I miss her every day. It's really difficult to even drive by her house. She was a pillar in the community. She was definitely a pillow in the community, and she's, she really fought hard for that park. Mm -hmm. She fought hard for the park, although she was not an original member, but she fought hard to make sure that the children had a playground, mm -hmm. that every year when they had their um, Sunday school convention, at her church, which is That's located right. on Carton Street. And her son, who's the pastor, Bishop Randy Parker, mm -hmm. Mother Parker would always call you or myself. She always called Greg Roberts That's right. to make sure that everything was clean. And before she left, it is nice to know that that park was named. And since then, we have, what, a flag there? Right. And then they, they did, um, there's a new well, not a new playground area, but yeah, there's an upgraded playground, playground area. What else did they do over there? And well, you know, we put a uh, we put a some rocks out, mm -hmm. and then we put some landscape, yes. and then we put a uh, a plaque plaque with That's all of the original names. original names. And then also there was a plaque that actually has Mother Parker's name on it, mm -hmm. a dedication to her as well. And then, then we had a pretty good crowd that night. We had a good crowd. We had a you really know, we good crowd. We always have people behind the scene. Yes. So yes. As the plaque we put was behind the scene people that worked mm -hmm. hard. And Miss Eloy Smith, who was one of the original members, mm -hmm. she sure was, is still living right now. That's right. And actually, her home is right there next to the park. Next to the park. So her family, along with other family members of the the original members of the Willing Working Parks mm -hmm. were the ones that really wanted to get this off the ground because you still have, let's see, is it Miss Kate Phillips? Miss Kate Phillips. Miss Kate Phillips lives, lives right next door to Miss mm -hmm. Eloy and she was a member. A member So also. she was there, unfortunately, because of Miss Eloy's health, she could not be in could attendance, be but attendance. her children were there. That's right. Sandra and Sheila. And who are the children? I think that was it. Okay. Sandra and Sheila. Okay, they were there, so it was really nice to be able to do that. There was some new lighting. Right. That was put new in. New lighting. Right. New lighting and um, flowers. So I'm glad that we that we were able to do we that. Were able to. Right. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do this year? Well, let's what's going on in the community? This year, I know one of our major projects this year that we have got a uh, block grant to redo. Thompson Street. That is right. That is right. Block four hundred sixty-two thousand two hundred dollars. And they've already started with the families. Well, we got the bids out. Okay. And they already met with the families wow. and qualified. And so hopefully we start breaking ground and and uh, and start dispersing this summer on getting a lot of that mm -hmm. work done. Right. Well, I tell you, it's 2016. Before you know it, we'll be planning for 2017 Black History Month. I know. We forgot one thing in 2015. And I was just talking to and, uh, our Kelly Hunter, and she reminded me <laughs> that we went to the bridge. What bridge? The Melvin Johnson Bridge. Oh, that's right. We did the banquet. That is right. In honor that's of Melvin right. Johnson. Right. Now, tell me a little bit about Melvin Johnson. I know Melvin by name. Right. And I know his family, but tell me a little bit about Melvin. Melvin Johnson went to school at Aria Cousin, and he was one of the first Afro-American to get killed in Vietnam. Mm. After graduation, he went on to service, and he was deployed to uh, to Vietnam, and, you know, he did not he did not last. Oh. So... I did legislation along with our legislators, and we talked to you about it. And I wanted to do something to, in honor of Melvin Johnson because he was he was forgotten. Wow. Nobody never brought his name up. Mm. And then I, I see other other uh, soldiers getting streets and names and roles. So a lobby would be be he, 
and I talked with Donzel and Kim Elizabeth, mm -hmm. the legislators, and they thought it was a great idea. Wow. And that's how it started come about. And before you know, it was a, it was proved and hey, we had a, a groundbreaking groundbreaking and a city T V cover it mm -hmm. and it was just wonderful. Now where exactly is the bridge again? It's located right off one sixty six, like you're going into the Carrollton. Faber Road to one sixty six and then like you're going into Carrollton, Georgia. So is it is it past boundary waters where No, it's um it's Faber Road to get to the top to the red light turn right, like you're going down ninety two, I believe, right. over to oh, okay. uh, ninety two and you will see the one sixty six yes. to Carrollton. Right, right. As a back back road to Carrollton. Now why was it why was it dedicated in that area? Well, uh, it was down below the home house. Oh, okay. And we thought that would be wonderful because yeah. their home house was on that same street. Oh, wow. And it was burned down many, many years ago. Okay. So, okay. And it, they still own the property, and we thought that would be... Oh, that is nice. That would be nice. Right, and his family was there as well. His family, the whole family, and so they want to make the old home house area a park. And that, w that dedication happened in 2013? Um, should have been in 14. Was it it four? didn't happen okay, last 14. year, 14. Okay, and then last year, you actually were a promoter in getting a Melvin Johnson scholarship, scholarship fund together. Sure and that was in collaboration with the Black History Museum, Behe. That's right. Because yeah, I was in attendance, and I think there were four or five contestants or students who mm -hmm. had to write an essay, and they were recognized and... There were judges, and they were actually presented checks for college. Is that right? right? So is that going to continue again yes, this year? It was a well-attended event last it year. It was. And this year it's, it's scheduled for June 2017. Okay. And the tickets should be going on sale in March. Mm -hmm. Be he, we already had one meeting on it. Okay. So it's already set in stone. So hopefully we sent out a uh, request to uh, Congressman Scott's office and uh, we haven't heard anything yet, mm -hmm. but we got a commitment from our mayor, Mayor Rochelle Robinson. Oh, good. That if Congressman Scott couldn't make it, would she be the filler she said she would love to? <laughs> okay. So we haven't heard back from Congressman Scott. Hope we hear back soon. Right. And uh, moving on again. Well, I'm sure it's going to be a great, great um, program just like you had last year. It was very elegant, very, very well attended. The music was great. It, I don't think you had any seats well, open. Well, this year we collaborated with the uh, class of 1966, our real cousin. Oh, okay. This is their 50th year reunion. Now, that was the year I was born, in 66. <laughs> <laughs> that was the year so I was born. So they are joining hands with Behe, and they're going to have their 50th reunion that same weekend. What? And they're partnering up to help put the... Uh, Scholarship banquet on that Friday. Mm -hmm. Then the 18th, they're going to have the picnic on the plaza. Wow. They just got, it's their 50th year. Now, you, you're you saying 1960s, class of 1966? 1966. Well, I also know that the Lesseurs Club, this is their 50th anniversary. Well, and their banquet going to be right here in the wow. beautiful their conference Their banquet is going to be right here in the conference center. Are you going to sing? Have they asked you to sing? I guess. I guess. I, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I'm not sure what their plans are. I'm not a right. member of the Lesseurs Club, but I do know a lot of ladies that are there, elegant ladies. Yeah, and they had already contacted me, That's so uh, I'm sure you'll be contacted. You're going to be busy. Yeah, this is a busy year you're for gonna me. You're going to be You're always busy. Busy. Yeah. Always I busy. thank God for every, each and every day. I know you do. I know you do. Yeah. Well, I tell you, two, two, 2016, this is leap year. This is leap right. year, too. Yeah, it we is. have 29 days in February. So we have one more day in February. One more day in February. Yes. And, you know, we, we, not, we can't forget about our Juneteenth celebration this year. Mm -hmm. Now, that is a cultural celebration. Everyone ought to come out and just attend mm -hmm. because this year it's going to be on June 18th. And uh, we got a good lineup. And the lineup should be coming out in about another month or two. Mm -hmm. But uh, we want to really fill it up this year. And focus in on it. Focus right. in on it because it's, it's if some people don't know what Juneteenth is, but it was when the slaves were free in 1863. Mm -hmm. And it started out in? Gavison, Texas. In Texas, right. Mm -hmm. right. So it, it has grown to be one of the major events each year. Mm -hmm. So right after Black History 
we get ready for Juneteenth. Right. Councilman Davis, you know, do you ever, do you ever think or you ever wonder, um, why is it important to you that we continue to have black history? Well, because the schools have cut out so much and we have to take upon ourselves to teach our kids our heritage. Mm -hmm. And if we don't teach our kids our heritage, they won't be able to teach their kids. Mm -hmm. Because only so much in the schools, schools just maybe do it uh, in February. But we have to teach our kids it's history every day. Right, every day. Every day. Yeah, and I'm glad that you said that because to me, black history is not just during the month of February. That's right. We do focus on black history, and I'm glad that we have set aside the, the month of February so that we can continue to share our heritage, like you mentioned, and, mm -hmm. and talk about our culture, because it's really important. It's really important. I am definitely one for diversity. I love diversity. I think it's awesome. But I definitely like, I think every parent should speak about their culture. Right, that's right. Most definitely. I agree. But I am, I am very proud to be a, a strong black woman. That's right, I agree. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not sure what we're going to do during the, the month of um, February for 2017, but I guess we can ask our audience if you'd like to email Councilman Davis or myself. You can do that. You can find our email addresses on the City, du City of Douglasville website. And if you have any ideas, please email both of us. We welcome your ideas. We welcome your talents so that you can share black history with us every year right here at the city of Douglasville. And if you want to be a guest, email us and we'll put you on the list for 2017. Absolutely. This is fun. Okay. It's always good. All right. It's always good. Thanks, Councilman Davis. Thank you for coming again. All right.